I feel like I can make this video and talk to you guys about a lot of practical things that I really wish I would have thought about, talked about, promoted um, almost five years ago when I started my channel. If you're interested in the curly girl method or wavy and curly hair or just my channel in general, which is mostly about curly hair, but I've also been making like lifestyle and fitness kind of related content lately. If you're interested in any of that, then subscribe to my channel. Um, my name is Susie and I'm a 39 year old mom from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, who likes to make YouTube videos and I would love to have you as a subscriber. Yeah. The first thing I want to talk about is boring. I'm going to start with the boring one and then we'll get to like the scandalous stuff at the end of the video. But the first thing that I want to talk about is that when I started the curly girl method, I was really focused on making my hair as curly as possible. And that was the goal to have my hair be as curly as possible. So everything that I did was centered around having my hair, which is wavy sometimes, um, having my hair be uh, super tight curls and manipulating my hair as much as possible while following kind of the curly girl method rules in order to make my hair curly when my goal really should have been to have my hair be as healthy, as healthy looking, as free from damage as possible. It's going to help you to be more patient because your focus is going to be on the long-term effects that everything that you do has on your hair. If your hair is really damaged now, then it's obviously not going to be really healthy until you eventually trim off the old damaged ends um, and get your hair into a healthy state. So you're going to be taking care of your hair as you're growing out your damaged hair and that's really the goal there. Healthy hair finds its wave or curl pattern a lot easier. It reflects light, holds moisture and just looks a lot shinier, um, so much easier. And then the other thing that I never really talked about or thought about is that even when my hair has no product in it, I don't diffuse it, I don't spend time doing my hair routine, my curls kind of fall out. Um, the healthier my hair is, the better it looks kind of in the in-between stages or on the days that I don't want to style it and that is really important to me right now, especially at this stage of my life when I have two little kids and I'm super duper busy. Which brings me to my second point. So again, when I first started the Curly Girl Method, my goal was for my hair to be as curly as possible. I was on YouTube, I was Curly Susie on YouTube, I needed my hair to be curly, as tight curls as possible 24-7. And so I would use like probably a little bit too much product and I would probably style my hair a bit too often. I would say I was completely soaking, wetting my hair, going through a whole styling process and drying my hair like up to five days a week. That's a lot of time. And that's a lot of times bringing your hair from that soaking wet state to the dry state back and forth, back and forth. And all of that constant manipulation of your hair is not really good for your hair. And it takes a lot of time and effort. So I wish in the beginning that I would kind of embrace all of the different stages of my hair. And this really only applies to us that have our hair type, if you're watching this and you have a similar hair type to me, which is like, my hair is definitely curly, but it's kind of closer to the wavy, curly end of things. And so what that means is, when I first style or refresh my hair, my hair looks really curly, but then sometimes as the days go on, um, as the day goes on, sorry, my hair, the curl pattern, like becomes more loose or falls out. And if I sleep on my hair, even if I do all the things, sleep with my hair in a pineapple and use the silk pillowcase, the curl pattern gets really loose and tends to fall out, especially at the root. If I would have been really smart and I would have thought about it a little bit more, I would have focused on finding ways to style that hair um, and make that stage of my hair look as good as possible without having to soak my hair. I don't need to have super tight curls every day. And one of the benefits and the things I've been able to embrace about my hair type lately is that my hair has a little bit of, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very versatile. So my hair can look really curly or it can look really wavy or I can kind of straighten it a little bit without using heat and have it look half decent. So just because you're following the curly girl method doesn't mean that your pattern needs to be as tight as you can possibly make it at all times. For me, it's more about having my hair be healthy looking and have my hair 
be uh, easy to style and to suit my lifestyle. So think about that a little bit. The third thing that I wish somebody would have said to me in the beginning, um, even though if you've been watching me for a long time, I've been preaching some of these things like on and off for the last few years, but I really think that you are gonna benefit from keeping it really simple, especially at first. And what I mean by that is, if you follow the curly girl method, it's very likely that you either have that old like curly girl method handbook that Lorraine Massey put out like a million years ago, or you've just been following like some kind of a curly hair influencer or YouTuber um, or somebody on Instagram or something like that. Now, the curly girl method has really evolved over the last few years from being a really simple method um, to being something that's been really complex, that people are adding a lot more rules and techniques um, and different products to. So I really, my wish for you is that you can start out by keeping it really simple. So really simple for me is just no heat, basically, no heat styling, um, no silicone, no sulfate, and no drying alcohol. That's it. Everything else is kind of a bonus. Everything else is kind of like an unnecessary step that you can try. If it works for you, then great. If it's easy for you to do, if it fits with your lifestyle, if it doesn't complicate things too much, then great. But really for me, I find sticking to the no heat, no silicone, no sulfate, and no drying alcohol is basically all I need to do to keep my hair really healthy um, and have a really easy hair routine. Tip number four is like, think about the products that you're gonna buy a little bit before you buy them. Don't be a product junkie. Try to keep it simple with your products. You wanna think, um, is it something that's easy for you to get? So like, do you have to order it online and pay a bunch of shipping? Is it something you can get at your local drugstore, which is what I tend to stick to. I'm not a big online shopper. Um, you know, I'm like 39, so I went through that period of my life as like a young adult where people just didn't constantly online shop. So I like to go into a store and buy my products, especially like if I run onto something, I wanna be able to go, you know, five minutes away from my house and get it. So is it easy for you to get? Is it inexpensive? Does it suit your budget? For example, I tried the Briogeo Curl Charisma line um, and made like a promo video for that line on my channel like a long time ago. And I have to say, like it's a little bit protein heavy, so I think if I used it all the time and never mixed in other products, I don't think I would love it as much as I did as I did using it for a short period of time, but I have to say that that product line actually made my hair look noticeably better, like 10% better than it normally does. It was fluffy, the curls were defined, my hair felt really healthy, I loved it. Loved everything about it, except that I find it really expensive um, and it's just not in my budget. I'm on a budget, guys. Sorry, hate to say it, not a rich YouTuber. I have student loans, I have two kids. Um, you know, gas prices and all that. Like, I'm really trying to be more economical and so I like to choose products that I can always afford. So I don't wanna to have to like save up and you know, blow the bank on expensive hair products and then have to buy them again in a couple of months time and then be like, oh my God, I have to put out another hundred bucks or whatever. Um, I'd rather buy something that's a little bit less expensive. And then the other thing I like to think about when I buy my hair products is, um, and this is more me kind of talking to some of you out there who potentially have allergies, are vegan, are a little bit more environmentally conscious. You wanna think about the products you're buying and how they affect you and your values. Um, so I am guilty of buying drugstore products that probably don't use the best ingredients, you know, like big companies and stuff like that. But I have switched to a shampoo bar. I switched to a shampoo bar probably like a year ago because somebody just sent it to me for free and I tried it and I loved it. So that's something that I do feel good about because even though I'm not the perfect environmentalist, I have reduced the amount of, you know, single use plastic bottles that are going into landfills. And it's not about, like it's not like I think I'm making a big impact, this one person by switching to a shampoo bar, but I just think 
any little thing that you can do is better than doing nothing. And especially for somebody who's promoting products on a channel that other people are going to potentially go out and buy, it does make me feel good that that one thing that I'm doing um, is a little bit better for the environment and I'm supporting a small business. So kind of think about those types of things when you're buying your products as well, because why not? The fifth and probably most important piece of advice that I have is just to watch YouTube and look at social media and Instagram very critically um, because a lot of it is an advertisement. So when you're watching a YouTube video, you want to think, okay, this video is about a hairstyling routine, but what is this person trying to sell me? Are they trying to sell me something? Do they have affiliate links in the video? Are they getting a commission? You can usually tell by the type of link underneath the video um, if I purchase this product. If it's an Amazon link, usually it's not too bad because the person is actually just listing the products that they actually use. And if you happen to follow their link and buy that product off of Amazon, they get like a little bit of a commission. Um, or is the video sponsored? So like they're obvious things to look for. Uh, the other thing is, and this is more to do with Instagram, but like YouTube as well, I have kind of an inexpensive vlogging camera and I don't edit my videos as far as like um, the brightness and like putting filters and stuff like that on it, mainly because I don't have time and patience and I'm really not that good at editing, but I also have a, a soft box light behind my camera and I'm sitting in front of a big window. So this position in my house is like a really good setup for my hair to look really shiny. And you guys know that curly and wavy hair doesn't reflect light um, as well as straight hair. And so I'm putting myself in an angle where my hair looks less dry, let's say. In an Instagram photo, I would say 70% of the ads that you're looking at, um, of especially hair related ads, are influencers who have just freshly styled their hair. They might not even be 100% dry. It might be like 95% dry. So there's still a little bit of moisture in their hair. They haven't left their house yet. That's their indoor hair um, that is styled perfectly just for, one that, for that one photo. And even more importantly than that, most people who make advertisements for social media have a lighting kit. So I have like a cheap light in front of me and it makes a big difference. If you are watching somebody who has like a million subscribers, they probably have like a multi thousand dollar lighting kit and or camera and or editing software. And so when you look at someone and they have the same hair type as you, but their hair just looks so shiny and so amazing. And you're like, if I buy that product, my hair could look like that. Um, that is false because their hair probably doesn't even look like that unless they're sitting in front of their camera with built-in filters um, with the lighting. And that's, that's if they don't augment or edit their photos. And not everybody does, but it's still manipulating the light in such a way that your hair looks um, as healthy and shiny as possible. So just, you know, take everything you see on social media with a grain of salt. Think critically um, when you're looking at photos and ads and just know that you know, there's not a miracle product out there that's going to make every single person's hair look amazing because if there was, everybody, you know, on Instagram would be using the same products. And the reality is that we're not. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned a little bit. If you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, you can give it a big old thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye. Thank you.